This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by Bonifante Friction, high quality bell housings. I'm Gary Selzy, and you're watching Storytellers at Competition Plus TV. We all know that with Team Winston and the Johnsons the first year that adult beverage was a common place. And after the races on Sunday, our place was the place to be. So when I got the deal with Alan, my wife was pregnant with Dominic. And we didn't know till exactly when, when I got the call that it was going to happen. And then she found out she was pregnant. So that first year was pretty tough on me. <laughs> One, because we had a lot of parties because we won a lot. Um, to the travel and things like that, and then we had a baby. So I thought the greatest thing in the world would be to buy an RV. So we're in Seattle, and it was raining. I think the race even got rained out, or that day got rained out. So we went to Emerald Downs Horse Track in Seattle and went RV shopping. So Selzy always likes shit that he can't afford. So we're getting into a motorhome I can afford, and over my shoulder is the one I can't afford. So I'm checking it out. So we walked outside, and I told the guy, you know, if you could get this one, I'd buy that one for this price. So next thing you know, Jed's a millionaire. I got me a motorhome coming. So Jeff Garvin, who did cylinder heads on the Winston Dragster, he's going to drive the motorhome because it's going to fall. Because I've got to go home. I've got to do appearances. I've got different things i got to do. I'm not going to be able to get this motorhome around to a lot of the races sometimes. So we were testing in Tucson. So... We parked the motorhome right in the pit area, and Scotty Cannon was there. I met Jim Gennard for the first time, and Scotty likes to have a cocktail or two. I like to have a cocktail or two. Alan likes to have a cocktail or two, and somehow in between our testing, when we were done in the evening, we ended up in my motorhome. So, with a lot of adult beverages being had, the throttle, I call it a throttle, but the old motorhomes, when you, you push the throttle or a pedal to flush it. So somehow, Sunday night when we get done, I get Jeff, we're gonna get in the motor and we're gonna drive back to Santa Maria. So we get everything all inside, move the awnings in, all this stuff, we get in there and Jeff comes around and he goes, Gary, Gary, we got a problem. I said, what's that? He goes, it's full to the top. I said, what do you mean it's full to the top? He goes, the water, it's all the way to the top of the edge. I said, it can't be. Well, what had happened was the throttle stuck and all the water filled the crapper, and it ran out of water as the crapper filled to the top, so it was actually perfect timing. So I said, don't worry, Jeff, we're going to go down to the truck stop down here, and we're going to dump the RV. This is going to be perfect. I'm going to show you how easy it is to have this RV. Well, anybody that has an RV or trailer or anything knows you dump this blue stuff in to get rid of the smell, and it's a chemical. I guess it eats the poop up or whatever and helps it dissolve. So we drive to the truck stop, and I'm explaining to Jeff how easy this is, and no big deal. So I get down on my knees, and I plug this thing on there, and I'm talking to Jeff, and I said, okay, what you want to do is you want to pull the big one, because that's the poop. So let the poop go through the hose, and then when you wash it out with the gray water, the shower water, and the dishwater, because that'll clean the hose. Then you take another hose, and you flush it all out, and it's all fresh water, and you're good to go. Dump the chemicals back in it, and we're rolling. Jeff says, okay, got it. So I'm down there showing him. So what do I do? This thing is full to the brim, and the pressure's got to be through the moon. So I pull the handle, and it goes, and it blows the hose off of the hookup and hits me right square in the chest, and I mean, literally, it's going everywhere. <laughs> and I shove the thing back in, and I am blue with stuff all over me, into my uniform. I mean, it's bad, and I'm cussing like a sailor. And I'm screaming and yelling, so I'm trying to wash myself off. There's a hose bib there, and it's out of water. So I can't wash myself off. So I go to the outlets at this truck stop, and they've got all the handles taken off of the damn hose bibs. So I can't even lay under a faucet to get this crap off me, literally get this crap off me. So I go in the truck aisle and get the windshield wiper thing, and I'm trying to get it off. And this is just a bad situation. Just trying not to laugh. And trying to be serious, it's horrible. So I'm not getting in my motorhome with all this blue shit all over me. I have to take my clothes off. So I'm in the middle of a truck stop taking my clothes off down to my underwear to get in my motorhome. 
So Jeff, he's he's cracking up. My, my analysis is kind of, it's just stupid. It's so funny. So I get in there in my underwear, and we pull out, and I pull out in front of a guy in a pickup. I mean, I'm not thinking. I don't look, and I pull out, and this guy's blowing the horn. He's yelling. And I hang out the window. I yell, you son of a bitch. I said, you pull over, I'll kill you. And this guy looks at me, and I'm blue from the neck down. And he's got to think, this guy's a psycho. So he takes off. So we go a couple miles down the road, go to another truck stop, get a hose, fill it all up. I shower off, and the blue is in my skin. I can't get it out. So the other guys were testing in Phoenix. So we drive to Phoenix, and I, I don't know how, but everybody seemed to know. So as I'm walking through the pits, hey, Selzy, are you feeling a little blue? Hey, Selzy, you going to Vegas? No, why? I heard you're going to be a member of the Blue Man Group. And those guys just would not let me live it down. It was horrible. But I guess you could just say, you everywhere. <laughs> it's crazy.